Did I Ever Tell You How Lucky You Are? by Dr. Seuss. When I was quite young and quite small for my size, I met an old man in the desert of Dries, and he sang me a song I will never forget. At least, well, I haven't forgotten it yet. Footprint, cactus. He sat in a terribly prickly place but he sang with a sunny, sweet smile on his face. Old man. When you think things are bad, when you feel sour and blue, when you start to get mad, you should do what I do. Old man. Just tell yourself, Ducky, you're really quite lucky. Some people are much more, oh, ever so much more, oh, muchly, much, much more unlucky than you. Ducky. Be glad you don't work on the Bungle Bung Bridge that they're building across Boober Bay at Bum Ridge. It's a troublesome world. All the people who are in it are troubled with troubles almost every minute. You ought to be thankful, a whole heaping lot, for the places and people you're lucky you're not. Wood. Wood. Suppose, for example, you lived in Gazate and got caught in that traffic on Zate Highway 8. Baby. Man. Boy. Man. Man. Or suppose, just for instance, you lived in Gazare with your bedroom up here. And your bathroom up there. Ouch, bathroom. Suppose, just suppose you were poor Herbie Hart, who has taken his thrombimbulator apart. Herbie Hart. He never will get it together, I'm sure. He never will know if the gick or the goor fits into the scrux or the snux or the snoor. Herbie Hart. Yes, Ducky, you're lucky you're not Herbie Hart, who has taken his thrombimbulator apart. Think they work you too hard? Think of poor Ali Sard. He has to mow grass in his uncle's backyard. And it's quick growing grass, and it grows as he mows it. The faster he mows it, the faster he grows it. Ali Sard. And all that his stingy old uncle will pay for his shoving that mower around in that hay is the pitiless pay of two duplas a day. And Ali can't live on such pitiless pay. So, house. He has to paint flagpoles on Sundays in grooves. How lucky you are you don't live in his shoes. And poor Mr. Vic. Every morning at six, poor Mr. Vic has his orphan to fix. Hello, Mr. Bix. It doesn't seem fair. It just doesn't seem right. But his boyfriend just seems to go swamp every night. It swamps in a heap, sadly needing repair. Bix figures it's due to the local night air. It takes him all day to unschlump it. And then, the night air comes back, and it slumps once again. 
forfeit. No, oh, don't you feel blue? Don't get down in the dumps. You're lucky you don't have a Borfin that swamps. Two. And, while we are at it, consider the Schlotz, the crumple-horn, web-footed, green-bearded Schlotz whose tail is entailed with unsolvable knots. Schlotz, knots, tail. Schlotz. If he isn't muchly more worse off than you, I'll eat my umbrella. That's just what I'll do. And you're lucky indeed you don't ride on a camel. To ride on a camel, you sit on a whammel. A webble, you know, is a sort of a saddle held on by a button that's known as a faddle. Camel. And boy, if your old whammel faddle gets loose, I'm telling you, Ducky, you're gone like a goose. And poor Mr. Potter. T-crosser, I daughter. Marker. Mr. Potter. Eyes. Tease. He has to cross T's and he has to dot I's in an I and T factory out in Van Nuys. Oh, the jobs people work at. Out west near Hotch Hotch, there's a Hotch Hotcher bee watcher. His job is to watch, is to keep both his eyes on the lazy town bee. A bee that is watched will work harder, you see. Hotch Hotcher bee watcher. Bee. Well, he watched and he watched. But in spite of his watch, that bee didn't work any harder. Not much. So then somebody said, our old bee watching man just isn't bee watching as hard as he can. He ought to be watched by another hotch hotcher. The thing that we need is a bee watcher watcher. Well... The Bee Watcher Watcher watched the Bee Watcher. He didn't watch well, so another Hotch Watcher had to come in as a Watch Watcher Watcher. And today, all the Hotchers who live in Hotch Hotch are watching on Watch Watcher Watchering Watch. Watch watching the Watcher who's watching that bee. You're not a Hotch Watcher. You're lucky, you see. And how fortunate you're not Professor DeBreeze, who has spent the past 32 years, if you please. Javanese, Professor DeBreeze. Irish duck. Trying to teach Irish ducks how to read Javanese. Javanese, Irish duck. <laughs> And think of the poor puffing Poogle-horn players. Who have to parade down the Poogle-horn stairs every morning to wake up the Prince of Poogle-horn. It's awful how often their Poogles get broken. And oh, just suppose you were poor Harry Haddo. Try as he will, he can't make any shadow. And oh, just suppose you were poor Harry Haddo. Try as he will, he can't make any shadow. He thinks that perhaps something's wrong with his giz. And I think that, by golly, there probably is. 
And the brother's bazoo. The poor brother's bazoo. Suppose your hair grew like theirs happened to do. Hair. You think you're unlucky? I'm telling you, Ducky, some people are muchly, oh, ever so muchly, muchly more, more, more unlucky than you. Brothers Bazoo. And suppose that you lived in that forest in France where the average young person just hasn't a chance to escape from the perilous pants-eating plants. Pants-eating plants. But your pants are safe. You're a fortunate guy, and you ought to be shouting, How lucky am I? Pants. And, speaking of plants, you should be greatly gladdish you're not Farmer Falkenberg's 17th radish. And you're so, so lucky you're not Gucky Gown, who lives by himself 90 miles out of town In the ruins of Ronk, Ronk is rather run down. Ruins. And you're so, so, so lucky you're not a left sock. Left sock. Left behind by mistake in the caverns of Croc. Arches. Thank goodness for all of the things you are not. Thank goodness you're not something someone forgot. And left all alone in some punkerish place, like a rusty tin coat hanger hanging in space. Sky. That's why I say, Ducky, don't grumble, don't stew. Ducky. Some critters are much, much, oh, ever so much, much, so muchly, much, much more unlucky than you.